day. Question of the day. It's such a good question. Uh, Lyle, it's how do I pray? Oh, that's... Oh, but it's not just any how do I pray. Right. There's like so much to it. It's like... How can there be so much to it? It's, it's the like, simplest thing do ever. Do I have to kneel down and stick my bum in the air, my forehead on the ground? Do I have to hold some incense sticks? Do I have to like work my fingers with some rosary beads? You know, do I have to do a chanting? Do I have to climb a flight of stairs on my knees for God to hear me? What do I say? Is there a specific, you know, uh, list of things I have to get through in a, in a particular order? I... Mind you are confusing me with all of these questions. It's like... Prayer is so simple. Okay, so let me give you um, a Bible verse to answer your questions. Thanks, Lyle. Uh, let's go. It's, in fact, this is the second shortest verse in the Bible. So it's do very I have to hold a, hands with someone? Do I have to have my hands, my fingers out answer. straight, or do I have to like fold my fingers together? Because okay. you know they okay. say sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. if you don't have your hands flat against each other, that leaves a space in the middle for the devil to hide. Somebody said that. That's what my dad was taught when he was in school as a kid. So you can't you can't you can't lace your fingers together and make a ball. You have to have your fingers flat against each other when you pray. Deary me. Um, okay, so let me read to you what the Bible says. How about that? Go, yes, that'd be the best. And this is not the, this is the third shortest verse in the Bible. So this is really how simple this subject is. Oh good. This is First Thessalonians chapter five and verse seventeen. It says, "Pray without ceasing." There's your answer. Oh, okay, so hard. if you go like this without ceasing for the rest of your life, are you actually going to live? And by this you mean folding your hands together. Yeah, well, flat. The, the, way the, way, the way your dad was taught. Yeah, yeah. If you do that forever. Yes. The Bible says pray without ceasing. The Bible says you can be praying to God right now. I can be in communication with God right now. We should be in communication with God right now. That means that we are praying whatever we are doing, wherever we are, God doesn't cut himself off from us and God doesn't look down and go, oh, well, that person doesn't have their fingers flat or they're not playing with beads or they don't have their forehead on the floor. Therefore, I can't hear what they're saying. We serve a God who is a little bit bigger than that. Mm. He's able to hear us in all kinds of environments. And when you read the Bible, you will find people praying in many, many different ways. So traditional Western prayer, uh, particularly amongst evangelical Christianity, may be to kneel down Fold hands and close eyes. You often find people in the Bible doing the opposite, looking up to heaven, raising their arms to heaven. Yeah, it's standing position. And praying in a standing With position. eyes open. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, we have many different customs and, and, and so forth that are associated with prayer. Many of them are good. Some of them are not so good. The Bible says, and when you pray, this is uh, Matthew 6 verse 7, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. So in other words, don't say the same prayer over and 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 over again. And so, you know, if you're praying the same prayer with your beads or something like that, that's probably not appropriate. God has heard that prayer before. He doesn't want to hear it again. Um, if you put prayer flags in the wind to flutter. Once again, God knows what's written on that flag. You only have to write it down once. It doesn't need to flutter away. God is bigger than that. He is powerful enough to be able to hear your prayer. Um, and so there are yeah, so many different ways that we can pray. The important thing is not so much how we pray, but that we do pray. Now, there's some great advantages to some of these forms of prayer. So, for instance, the traditional form um, that you'll find in evangelical Christianity Kneeling is, a, is symbolic and it's a reminder that we are coming into the presence of the ruler of the universe. This is not just one of the fellows. This is you know, the creator and ruler of the universe, sovereign God, who also wants to be your best friend. And so that's often why we kneel in formal prayer. It's like uh, a humbling. <clears throat> yeah, humbling. Clo uh, folding hands, great idea for kids because um, kids, you know how kids are in prayer and their hands Fidget. start to go. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's why we're always taught to fold our hands uh, when we were um, kids, when we were praying. And it's probably why your dad was taught that way. But I think your dad's teacher may have um, <coughs> used a little bit of license there <laughs> and misled him a little bit, embellished a little bit to uh, try and scare him into uh, obedience. Uh, of course, you've got... Uh, the concept of closing your eyes means to remove distractions. So that's, that's not such a bad thing either. Take its distractions away so that you can focus on communicating with God. And of course, don't forget to pray in the name of the Father. Sorry, to the Father in the name of Jesus. That's what the Bible teaches. So what about like praying out loud or praying silently? Because I've heard some people say they can only concentrate on the prayer out loud. And some people say you shouldn't pray out loud because the devil can hear you. Yes, I think that, I think that God is a little bit more powerful than, than the devil. And uh, the devil can probably predict what you're going to talk about anyway, so I wouldn't worry about that. God is on your side. You have nothing to fear. 
Amen. Any prayer is a good prayer. Uh, if you have a question, give us a call here at Faith FM, 1-800-FAITH-FM is our number, and uh, we'll love to answer your question.